Hello and welcome to the Valley Oak Paper YouTube channel. My name is Cecilia and this is the card I'm going to make today. It features the new Honey Bee Stamps Lovely Layers Quail die set. Here's the layering guide for the die set. As you can see, there's a male and a female bird. Both birds are mostly colored brown and gray, but the male has more contrast than the female. And here is the die set laid out on black paper. The plume of the female bird points straight up. That of the male bird points forward. That's how you can tell which bird is which. Each bird has a base layer and four layers that go on top of that. Then we have the feet, beaks and eyes as well. I've die cut all the pieces out of white cardstock. The layering pieces for the male bird are on the left and on the, for the female on the right. I also have the small parts on a piece of mint tape so I don't lose them. I'm going to ink blend all the die cuts with the Distress Oxide inks, but first I'm going to double up the base layers for both birds. That will give me a stable foundation. Now I'm ready to ink blend the male bird. If you look at reference photos of California quail, you'll notice that their feathers are barred in white and brown. The die cut base has embossed detail. I can use that detail and a flat blending tool to create the barred effect. The ink I'm using is Distress Oxide Gathered Twigs. I'm starting with the nape of the neck. That's going to be one of the darkest brown spots on this bird. I'm also inking the edges pretty heavily. Then I'm gently swiping the flat side of the blending tool across the texture for the barred effect. That was Iduna, one of my lovely assistants. In the middle of the abdomen, I'm adding some aged mahogany Distress Oxide. That's one of the ways you can tell a male apart from a female quail. I'm also adding a little aged mahogany to the nape of the neck to deepen the color there. Moving on to the next layer. With a small brush, I'm covering the whole die cut with hickory smoke distress oxide. For the next layer, I'm going with a lighter gray, pumice stone. I'm switching to black soot for the fourth layer. The feet are next. There are two layers for those. I'm starting with the feathers on the upper legs. For those I'm using gathered twigs again. I'm also adding a little aged mahogany in the middle. For the base I'm using hickory smoke. Now I can glue all the ink blended layers together. You can use the plume and the beak to align the die cuts. Note that the dark brown at the back of the neck stays exposed. Moving on to the legs, I'm adding the feather layer on top of the gray base layer. Then I'm adding glue to the top of the leg feathers and layering the abdomen on top of that. That's it for the male bird so far. I'm going to add the detail to the face later. Here I'm moving on to the female bird. For the base I'm using gathered twigs distress oxide again. Her darkest spots are the plume and the edges. The female also has barred feathers on her abdomen, so I'm gently swiping the flat foam blending tool across there to preserve the white valleys. And there's my lovely assistant again, ever helpful. For the next layer, I'm sticking with gathered twigs along the center and switching to hickory smoke for the left and right side. Then I switch to pumice stone for the third layer. I'm blending the fourth layer and gathered twigs again. As I'm layering the die cuts, you can really see how much less contrast there is in the browns and grays of the female bird. Next, I'm tackling the leg feathers and feet. I'm blending gathered twigs on the feathers and pumice stone on the feet. That's all the ink blending for the female bird for now. I assembled her off camera and here I'm adding the feet to the body. There are obvious embossed areas on the die cuts that show you how to put them together. 
that makes it so much easier. So this is what we have right now. Two birds with all the major parts assembled. Now it's time for the details. We're going to start with these odd shaped strips. They outline the face of the male bird. I tried leaving them white, but they stood out like a sore thumb, so I went with speckled egg instead. That looks a lot more natural. The next shape looks a little like a comma. It belongs on the female bird's face. I'm going to use gathered twigs for that one. Next we have the eyes. I used a black sharpie and glossy accents on the eyes. For the beaks I used black soot and then I added a white gel pen for a highlight. Here are the birds with all the details in place. I think they turned out great. On the left here you can see the embossing folder that I'm going to use. It's called Falling Leaves and it's by Spellbinders. They have a lot of wonderful embossing folders. On the right, we have another Honeybee Stamps die set. It's called Grateful and it's part of their Buzzwords series. I'm going to use the word and the shadow. Then I'm bringing in the For You from the Hooray For You stamp and die set. That's also from Honeybee. Here's the embossed background. I chose black cardstock because it makes the birds stand out better. Next, I added splatter to my background with a Nouveau Shimmer pen in the color Blush Rosette. I cut out the word Grateful from black cardstock and the first shadow layer from pearlized vellum. I also cut Grateful from white cardstock twice more so I could stack the sentiment. Once the stacked sentiment has dried, I adhere it to the vellum shadow layer. I'm using art glitter glue and a fine tip bottle for all my gluing today. Finally, I stamped and heat embossed for you in Ranger detailed copper embossing powder. We are down to the final assembly now. I'm starting by adhering the word grateful because I want the birds to perch on it. There's plenty of room for my art glitter glue on the back of the vellum because of the weight of the sentiment. Next, I'm adding foam tape to the back of the sentiment strip and placing it in the bottom right. I dry fitted the birds to make sure I could get the placement right. I popped up the bird bodies with foam tape and glued down their feet onto the sentiment. And that finishes the card for today. I hope you enjoyed that. I will show you some more still images of the card at the end of the video. You can find links to everything I used in today's card in the description box below, as well as in my blog post on valleyoakpaper.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.